Day four, the conclusion of the Decameron. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio, translated by Edmund Rigg. Day the fourth, the conclusion. Heart sore as the gentle ladies had been made by the preceding stories. This last of Dionio provoked them to such merriment, more especially the passage about the static on the hook, that they lacked not relief of the piteous mood engendered by the others. But the king, observing that the sun was now taking a yellowish tinge, and that the end of his sovereignty was come, in terms most courtly made his excuse to the fair ladies, that he had made so direful a theme as lovers in felicity the topic of their discourse after which he rose took the laurel breast from his head and while the ladies watched to see to whom he would give it set it graciously upon the blond head of fiametta saying herewith i crown thee as deeming that thou better than any other will know how to make to-morrow console our fair companions for the rude trials of to-day fiametta whose wavy tresses fell in a flood of gold over her white and delicate shoulders, whose softly rounded face was all radiant with the very tints of the white lily, blended with the red of the rose, who carried two eyes in her head that matched those of the peregrine falcon, while her tiny sweet mouth shewed a pair of lips that shone as rubies, replied with a smile, And gladly take I the rest, Philostrato, and that thou mayst more truly understand what thou hast done, it is my present will and pleasure that each make ready to discourse to-morrow of good fortune befalling lovers after diverse direful or disastrous adventures. The scene propounded was approved by all, whereupon the queen called the seneschal, and having made with him all the meet arrangements, rose and gaily dismissed all the company until the supper hour. Wherefore, some straying about the garden, the beauties of which were not such as soon to pall, others bending their steps towards the mills that were grinding without, each, as and where it seemed best, they took meanwhile their several pleasures. The supper hour come, they all gathered in their wonted order, by the fair fountain, and in the gayest of spirits, and well served they supped. Then, rising, they adversed them, as was their wont to dance and song, and while Philomena led the dance, Philostrato said the queen, being minded to follow in the footsteps of our predecessors, and that, as by their, so by our command a song be sung, and while witting that thy songs are even as thy stories, to the end that no day but this be waxed with thy misfortunes, we ordain that thou give us one of them, whichever thou mayst prefer. Philostrato answered that he would gladly do so, and without delay began to sing on this wise. Full well my tears attest, O traitor love, with what just cause the heart, with which thou once hath broken faith, doth smart. Love, when thou first didst in my heart enshrine, her for whom I still sigh, alas, in vain, nor any hope do know, a damsel so complete thou didst me show, that light as air i counted every pain wherewith behest of thine condemned my soul to pine ah but i gravely erred the which to know too late alas doth but enhance my woe the cheat i knew not ere she did leave me she she in whom alone my hopes were placed for twas when i did most flatter myself with hope and proudly boast myself her vassal lowliest and most graced nor thought love might begrieve nor dreamed he e'er might grieve twas then i found that she another's worth into her heart had taken and cast me forth a plant of pain alas my heart did bear what time my hapless self cast forth i knew and there it doth remain and day and hour i curse and curse again when first that front of love shone on my view, That front so queenly fair, And bright beyond compare. 
wherefore at once my faith my hope my fire my soul doth imprecate ere she expire my lord thou knowest how comfortless my woe thou love my lord whom thus i supplicate with many a piteous groan telling thee how i anguish sore i groan yearning for death my pain to mitigate come death and with one blow cut short my span and so with my cursed life me of my frenzy ease for wheresoever i go twill sure decrease save death no way of comfort doth remain no anodyne beside for this sore smart the boon then love bestow and presently by death annul my woe and from this abject life release my heart since from me joy is ta'en and every solace deign my prayer to grant and let my death the cheer complete that she now hath of her new fear song it may be that no one shall thee learn nor do i care for none i wot so well as i may chant thee so this one behest i lay upon thee go hie thee to love and him in secret tell how i my life do spurn my bitter life and yearn that to a better harbourage he bring me of all might and grace that owe him king full well my tears attest Philostratus mood and its cause were made abundantly manifest by the words of this song, and perchance they had been made still more so by the looks of a lady that was among the dancers. Had not the shades of night, which had now overtaken them, concealed the blush that suffused her face. Other songs followed until the hour for slumber arrived, whereupon, at the behest of the queen, all the ladies sought their several chambers. End of Day 4 The Conclusion